Hi, you're watching Women in Management with me, She and Shannon. And today we're going to be talking about retaining talent in Malaysia. And where else better to talk about this particular issue than Talent Corp. And today we have with us the CEO of Talent Corp, who is a man, by the way, first time on Women in Management. His name is Johan Murikan. And also we have Mona Shafini, who is the HR manager of PWC. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Now, why is, it re why is retaining talent in Malaysia such an issue? I think you've got to look at it from the economic imperative for Malaysia. We have these great ambitions to become a developed nation and so we need to really optimise on Malaysia's talent. Now if you, if you think about it, the pipeline of talent coming out of universities for example are increasingly predominantly women. You know, mm -hmm. Many public That's universities, right. it's probably reached a stage where it's probably you know, two thirds you know, for every two women you have one guy. Not sure what's happening to the guys but you know, recognising that you have this pipeline of women coming out from universities, we need to ensure that they remain in the workforce. Now, the data actually shows that only half of working women, or wo of women of working age, are actually in the workforce. What you see is that you have this peak where in the 20s, you know, they're all in the workforce. Mm -hmm. But towards the late 20s and 30s, many then start leaving the workforce. That's right. And I think the World Bank as well just recently uh, put out a statistic that 40% of w female graduates don't go into the workforce as well, isn't it? Yes. And I think this, so this is an issue because we have companies that if they are then to basically help Malaysia propel the economy to become a developed nation, they need talent. Mm -hmm. And if a big pool of our talent are women, we need to ensure that they're in the workforce. And so the, so the key question is how do we A, retain or attract women into the workforce and maybe for those, even for those who leave the workforce, how to bring them back. Because the one thing that we notice in other countries, we're not just talking about developed countries, European countries, even in the likes of you know, Asian countries like Japan and Korea, we see that as female participation rate drops off towards the late 20s and 30s, it recovers later on. Women do come back to work and, and we need to see how we can also see that that happens in Malaysia as well. That's right. And Mona, as a HR manager in PwC, you know, the last time that I was there, there was tons of women in PwC and I think that has contributed to the fact that you guys have a very good female-friendly policy. But from your perspective as a HR manager, do you find that it is quite difficult for you to bring in more female graduates? We don't actually have a problem with female graduates um, in the sense that we do get a lot of um, uh, applicants coming in uh, at the graduate level, but it's keeping them there once they've once um, they've actually um, acquired the requisite experience. You know, they've, they've, they're qualified, they've got the experience, and that's when they decide basically to um, drop out of the workforce. So our challenge basically is to come up with um, ways and means to retain them, right? To make sure that they remain upskilled, that they remain in contact with the industry, and then after that, it's to reintegrate them at the workforce because the truth is that at some point of time, uh, they they will come back, they want to return, and it's to facilitate that integration into the workforce. So, John, how does Talent Corp um, facilitate that? I mean, is no, it, is there a One of our, our key agendas is really how do we support the overall government's initiative? There's a target that's been set of, you know, 55% raising the participation rate of women in the workforce from, from currently is about 47% up to 55%. Mm. So where, where can we play a role in facilitating that? So we see a key part of that is for corporate Malaysia to embrace flexible working arrangements. You know, having work policies that facilitate women to remain in the workforce. And again, separately, how do we then promote for women to return back into the workforce after a career break? Towards that, you know, we've uh, launched a portal. It's called Talent Wanita. Okay. Uh, and we hope that it is a platform where companies can perhaps advertise job opportunities which are suitable for women in search of flexible working arrangements. At the same time, it is also a platform for sharing, sharing of best practices of companies like PwC that have really been quite progressive mm -hmm. in having policies that, that help and facilitate women to remain in the workforce or come back to the workforce. We want to also share personal stories of successful women because I, you know, I think we need also to have those role models to help inspire you know, younger generation of women to really you know, have the ambition that they can have it all, mm -hmm. both career and family. But why, why is there such an initiative for the government to increase it from 47% of women participation to 55%? You know, it's, it's part of, I mean, setting, I think it's always good to have a target. Mm. I think 
the higher the better. I mean, if you look at it in, in even European countries, you know, we have participation rates of even north of, of, of 60%, but it's just a very in immediate target to just focus our minds on. And it's not just, the government's not just set a target for 55% of overall uh, participation. We also have a target towards leadership levels as well. You know, uh, for example, the Securities Commission announced that they have a target that they want all listed companies to target towards having 30% of boards being made up of, of women. Because I think, as, as Mona explained, you have the graduates joining the workforce. So mm -hmm. most companies would have you know, more than almost about 50% of their workforce at the graduate level being women. But it starts tapering off really quickly. That's and true. as you reach to senior management level, you know, it really starts dropping off. And I think ultimately, if you talk about women at, at board levels or CEOs, it's only down to 5%. Mm -hmm. So we also need to a, ensure the overall rate is higher and also the representation at, at the senior management level is, is, is higher. I mean, it's important because we all believe that diversity and inclusion, not only is it good in terms of having more talent in Tubu, but having that diversity also enhances corporate performance. And there have been many studies that show that, that if you have diversity, whether it's at the board level, at the organisational level, that it helps those organisations perform better. If those organisations in Malaysia perform better, as a whole, the Malaysian economy will perform better. If you could summarise it, women make good business sense okay. because um, they besides you know the spending aside and the clout i think uh, if you don't have women at the highest levels of decision making even in terms of the services and products that you're offering you may not be in tune with what the market wants mm -hmm. and women even if they don't work they make decisions on a lot of things, household decisions that affect um, companies such as what kind of child insurance, uh, what kind of medical insurance should I buy, what kind of car should I purchase. Women have an increasing say because they're educated, you see, and they worked. So they have an increasing um, say in, in, say, a partnership or a marriage. And as a result, uh, they do a lot of the decision making. So if you're a CEO of, at the highest levels, if you don't have um, women uh, who are in tune with what the market wants, mm -hmm. then you know, you could very well be at a loss. So women do make good business sense. I want to add on, you know, in fact, it does say in the World Bank that diversity and inclusion, particularly of women, makes for smart economics. And you know, recently we had uh, Christine Lagarde, the head of IMF, visit Malaysia. And she was saying, would we have had this global financial crisis if we had greater representation of women in banks? And I think there's a whole sense that in all these big, you know, overseas, you know, Western banks, we had all these, you know, dominated by the boys' club and boys, you know, maybe a bit more into risk taking. Perhaps we've been balanced a lot better. You had that diversity that provides that balance to its decision making. And I think, you know, I think that's where the, the, the influence and the benefits of having women having diversity in your workforce at both the leadership level and at the workforce perhaps makes for better performance and better outcomes for everyone. Definitely. I think that's a fantastic point and something that we've actually touched upon before. And I would like to talk about this again in our next segment. So all of you guys stay tuned. And we are back. You guys are watching Women in Management and we are talking about retaining talent in Malaysia. And Mona, just now you were mentioning a particular point that I thought was quite interesting about um, how a lot of women in especially in the service industry it all contributes goes well it boils down to their characteristics isn't it so maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on that what is it about women that makes them so successful in the service industry well the service industry increasingly you see that requires for skills um, that uh, men may struggle with for example multi the ability to multitask mm. uh, interpersonal savvy you know being able Jordan to relate well to right others now. <laughs> really <laughs> yes. so um, these are women these are the strengths that women bring uh, to to the table and as well as in certain like banking uh, just Johan mentioned just now the the risk appetite as well is lower but so the, it does make it does balance out certain decisions when it comes to whether you know they're going to invest in a certain portfolio, it does balance the stakes out a, a tiny bit more. So these are the strengths that women bring uh, to the table, which is why it's important to retain them as well. If we're going into the industry, service industry, Malaysia is going to service industry in a big, in a very big way. So Jahan, maybe you have something to add to that. I saw like, your cheeky little smile. Just oh, okay, no, I, I mean I'm probably a stereotypical guy who yeah can't multitask, but yeah. but we also at the same time don't want to just you know typecast or, or you know just you know stereotype you know women or, or, or men. Yeah. You know I, I think there's something, but there's something to be said that when you have diversity, you have different perspectives. It really you know aids the exchange of ideas and really that's what we want you know as Malaysia moves towards a knowledge-based economy, you know services that really value add. You know, that's where you want really, you know, free flow of ideas and that happens best when you have that diversity. Definitely. And especially now with a lot more women going into the workforce, do you, do you guys feel that this might actually change the whole landscape of uh, Malaysia's workforce at the moment? We hope it will. I mean, we hope, you know, 
women are doing very well at, at school, universities. Um, already we have some obviously very successful and eminent women. Obviously we have you know, Tan Suzetti as governor, in internationally recognised. You know, we have some leading CEOs you know, in the finance sector. We have you know, Yvonne Cha, Datuk Khadija Ahmad. You know, we have you know, Plus Highways, we've got Datuk Noriza. We have a lot of also very successful women at the top end. But how do you then make it more of a norm? Because the pipeline coming out of universities increasingly are, are women. And so we want to then see that success continue in the workforce and be really more of a norm than just by exception. Mm -hmm. And I think another big issue as well, even though that so many women now who are CEOs, there's also this transition phase where a lot of women who are in mid-level management do not want to actually go into senior level management. They feel either contented or due to their work, well, their personal life, they feel it's not possible for them to actually undertake a lot more um, responsibilities. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the World Bank in April 2012 said that in Malaysia, senior management is only about 11%, yes. which are women. Now, why, why is this, Johan? You're looking at me very accusingly. Oh, so it's all down to the men. It must be the men. We're <laughs> suppressing the women. No, but there is a point at which I think we've got to accept that one, particularly in an Asian culture, and I think even probably around the world, I think women generally are, are expected to bear a bigger responsibility when it comes to the family. And so the question is, how do we then help women, particularly you know, working mothers, balance the, the, the competing demands of a career and also family? Um, I think very famously, Sheryl Sandberg, you know, who's the CEO and on the board of Facebook, I think said, you know, a very key component obviously is having um, marry the right guy or marry the right husband. Because mm -hmm. I think you need obviously that, that support structure at home to ensure that, in a sense, responsibilities are, are bet better shared. So that's, I think, on, on the home environment. And then, I guess in the Malaysian context, sometimes that's supported by having supportive in-laws and, and all the rest of it. I think you need a supportive environment to enable a woman to succeed. At the same time, I think it also then needs companies to then recognise that women have these responsibilities and that's why when we talk about flexible working arrangements, you know, the, the flexibility of being able to send your kids to school then coming in, so not to be, you know, straight-jacketed by 9 to 5, being able to do some of your work at home if you don't have meetings to meet, meet clients. I think these are all important elements that better enable uh, a woman, and I guess one I would say who are very good at also time management, um, to also, you know, be able to balance these, these competing demands. And that's why we really want corporate Malaysia to embrace these flexible working relations, because it's better that you have these. It may be extra work for companies, but it's about ensuring your retention of your top talent. So we hope that this agenda continues. I think there needs to be a culture of trust. You know, after all, you are dealing with people who are highly educated, who are highly experienced, and I think companies need to start trusting and letting go a bit more, trusting their staff that things will happen and things will get done, even if the staff isn't visibly in front of them, physically there, you see. So, um, so it's, it's a cultural, in a way, it's a cultural mindset as well. It's, it's slowly coming. I think more and more, you see more and more employers are you know, coming around and saying, yeah, actually, you know, I can let my staff work away from home. That's fine. You know, I know what she's doing. I know that he or she will deliver this. Um, but that culture of trust, companies need to start trusting their, their employees a bit more, you know, and letting go and, and allowing for this to happen. And that's something PwC is doing at the moment. Yes, we it? are, as a matter of fact. So a lot of my colleagues actually are, are actually on flexi working arrangements. And we're also starting with unconventional resourcing um, in the in the months to come so not only do you get to you we also offer models basically where you get to choose uh, to work at certain times of the year instead of working uh, you know for a full year or you get to work on specific accounts for for a, a determined period and that allows you to basically remain in contact with the profession so I can summarize I think it really requires this mindset change yeah. it requires the mindset change of the support system at home, the family, husband and family, and also needs a mindset change of employers in terms of how they best manage their talent. This is key, key elements to en enabling women to continue and succeed. Definitely, I think that's what Talent Juanita is actually doing at the moment, and we're going to talk about that in our next segment, so you guys out there, stay tuned. And we are back. So now, talking about retaining talent and about the Talent Corp, the Talent Wanita portal. Now, maybe you can elaborate a little bit on what does that portal do for women out there? So, Talent Wanita hopes to serve as this sort of one-stop portal where you can, one, find out more about opportunities that are available in terms of flexible working arrangements that, that employers are offering. At the same time, we 
have policies or best practices which you know major leading employers who are introducing various flexible arrangements that help support women at work these acts like a resource so other companies who are thinking about it but perhaps haven't got around or, or can't invest the resources to invest the time and research in it can then just almost copy and paste or at least there will be then also people people like Mona they can they, they talk talk to so these I think we sometimes think oh, lama susah nak buat or you know it's it's oh, how do you even go where do you even start but we hope then provide all these linkages to people who can help them and share I think you know it, it's not you know there are always challenges in implementation so they can share and find people that they can talk to and also in a sense for women themselves I think we also want to have inspiring stories that really motivate and have as you said you know people they are middle management but they don't really want to go on we want to also motivate them to the ambition that they can go all, all, all the way. And I think that's the thing that Talent Corp is doing at the moment. You guys are working on a calendar. Yes. Is that right? Yes, we yeah. wanted to use this feature and we featured, we featured uh, for example, uh, Pauline Ho from, from PwC. Yes. It's a great yes. story. You know, you have here a mother of triplets mm -hmm. and that's a challenge, a challenge in mm -hmm. itself. And she's been able to become head of assurance. And, you know, I, I used to be an accountant and, you know, assurance, you know, assurance is the biggest, you know, I think biggest business. Yes, it is the biggest business. And, and here you have a, a lady who's heading it first time, first time in PwC, first time in Malaysia, mm -hmm. I, I suspect. And there are not many, many in the region. So I think that's a, that's a, that's a great story. Mm -hmm. And especially, sorry, Mona, you were No, it's okay. I think the, what women really need out there, basically, other than support, support of the family, support of the company, um, as well as the infrastructure, because mm -hmm. we forgot to talk about infrastructure, yes. basically. Technology has been a great enabler. Mm -hmm. It's the role models, showing them that it can be done. You don't have to follow the traditional route to having a successful career. You define success and what, 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 it, what success is to you, basically. But, if to be in your own world, to be you know bogged down by the day-to-day -day details and not knowing that out there there are all these women that have you know made it one way or another, various routes towards success, they need to know that the resources are available for them. Yes. Fantastic. And also, um, you were mentioning something very interesting just now during the break um, about how having women in the industry would actually contribute a lot to the to the to the economy. As well, exactly. Maybe I can start off. I think the idea is that. Although sometimes this may be framed as a women's agenda and yeah. we say, look, we should have flexible working arrangements. But, you know, really at the end of the day, if companies then adopt uh, work models like flexible working arrangements, it doesn't just help the women. Actually, yeah. it potentially helps everyone. You know, I'm a guy. I, I think I would also would like to send, you know, plan my time better. I might, I might also want to benefit from flexible working arrangements, you know. So in that sense, it, it helps productivity and the working model for Malaysia as a whole. And I want to touch on what Mona mentioned earlier. You know, she said like, you know, there's this need for trust. You know, sometimes Malaysia you have this culture where, oh, the boss wants to see the guy sitting out there. Only when the guy goes home baru yeah. can, can, can go home. You know, and I think we need to move away from it. Ah, the guy leaves at 6 p.m. means he has no commitment. I want to relate, sorry, if you don't mind, this quick story that in, in Citibank, I was talking to the, to, to the Citibank and they had in, introduced an in-house crash and it operates up to 6 p.m. And then he was saying, oh, it's a good thing because then the moms then will have to go home after they pick up their kids. I said, how is that a good thing? Because I mean, my culture is, you know, staying home, staying at the office late is always good. But he says, no, we need to start breaking that cycle that says that to be seen as normal, you need to be able to stay on till very late. Mm -hmm. So this is a good thing that then women then start leaving at six. Then other people say, hang on, it's possible for me to finish all my work within the normal time and go home unless there's some pressing need. And I think that's also helps the whole cultural change that, yeah. that we can do some things that support women at work, mm -hmm. but I think then it's part of an overall cultural change for corporate Malaysia. If you would speak to a lot of bosses, including my own partners at PwC, what they want is a more innovative and creative workforce, right? Mm -hmm. But to have that innovation and creative workforce thing, you can't be holed up you know, in, in, an in, in an office 24-7, exactly. you know, 365 days a week. You need that creative space. And sometimes it's in doing things that are a bit out of the ordinary, time, you know, to do things that are a bit out of the ordinary, that will trigger that creativity in you, that creative person. We're all creative, actually, at the end of the day. But so we're hoping that these initiatives that are initially done for women to help them, you know, reintegrate the workforce, to help them uh, manage career and working, work, work home life better, you know, we hope that the spillover will be overall, you know, work-life balance for everyone and happier workers as a whole. I think Malaysians work some of the longest hours as well. In, in, in Asia, it's, it's general culture. So we hope that this will bring about, women will lead the way in bringing about cultural change in the workforce. So what's good for women is not only good for family, but it's also good for society, society, society as, a as a whole. And businesses in the long run. I think I want to touch upon one last topic is about, you were mentioning that a women don't actually network that much. We don't ask um, advice from people. So, is Talent Corp going to be doing anything about that? About you know this whole networking. Well, there's some 
platforms that are already emerging. You know, mm. for example, there's the NIEW, and, and you know, again, when we talk about wanting to promote, say, women at a leadership level, you know, we don't want it just to be some quota and just like tick the box and, and just just fill it up. You know, we really want to, women to have the capabilities, and the networks are a key part of, of that. So you know, whether it's capacity building, building up skills, but also having that network so they can you know refer. I think even guys. Any successful guy probably also have benefited having a mentor, and I think that is where you know we look forward to being you know help part of. Well, in a sense, we provide a network of of you know possible mentors, possible mentors, yeah. women who can share best experience. practices yeah. and experience. So you Wait, know, where can I where can I find that? Is that on Talent Wanita? Yes, Support get me. get in touch with us, and we'll be happy to add any women who's really interested in this in this agenda to to, to join us, and also men. Sorry, we also very much want you know. <laughs> It men, corp, you know, men yeah. in corporate Malaysia, you know, who who really see the logic, you know, who really recognize and and you know understand the business case for it, to join us to really advance this agenda. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I think we're gonna link that somewhere down here, and I think that's it for this episode, guys. You guys were watching Women in Management. I'll see you all next week.